friends, this is the Mrs. Wolfie from our Half Acre Homestead. Today we're going to have a nice special dinner. Uh, I'm going to make some ribs because we found some more of our ribs from our last pig in the freezer, so I'm really excited about that. But I'm going to make a stuffed cabbage. And for that, um, you're going to need some heavy cream. You're going to need a Savoy cabbage, uh, some baby spinach, some nice new potatoes, a leek, an onion, mushrooms, and some cheese, all right, and a bit of butter along with the, the cream. So I'm going to put some water in my pot and I have a wire rack in the bottom and I'm going to bring that up to a boil. I'm only going to put about an inch and a half because once these leaves are cut, I'm going to want to wilt them, kind of steam them, just so that they wilt a little bit and make them so that they don't break when I form the lining for the stuffed cabbage. Okay, we'll be right back. Alrighty, one thing I forgot to mention is that you're going to need a springform pan. Now, I don't have a springform pan, folks. All I have is this battered old pan that I've washed that has the bottom that comes out. So what I'm going to do, in order to make this come out hopefully easier, we're just going to take a big sheet of parchment and we are going to put it in the bottom like so and we're just going to make folds in it as we go around the pan just like tucks in a in a blouse as we go around the pan until we have the shape we want and then I'm going to hold down the sides at the bottom and just fold these down okay this is what we're going to make our stuffed cabbage in now we have our Savoy cabbage and as my mother-in-law asked me is it organic yes it is okay we're just going to take the core off the bottom of our Savoy cabbage and the reason I picked Savoy cabbage is it's got a lovely color and once it's wilted in the steam, it will be more pliable than regular cabbage. So we'll take the core out there and stuff it over there for the piggies. And we are just going to take these leaves like this. Oops. And we're just going to cut through again into the core. Now that we've taken that stem part out, we're just going to run our paring knife into the core to make the leaves easier to detach because we want the leaves whole and we want as many as possible and that one is a piggy one because it had a bit of, oh look we've got a bit, it was hidden under a nice leaf we have so I guess well, these are sometimes the prices you pay for organic. So we're just going to cut this little bit off. We want a whole leaf as much as possible. And I would normally go down to the next set of leaves, but this seems to go down quite a bit, this bit of frostbite or whatever this is. So I'm just going to cut it off. Now we are just going to take these over and drop these into my stock pot with the wire rack on the bottom and the two inches of boiling water. And we're just going to turn it off and we're going to drop these in, turn it off and cover it and let them wilt. I'll be right back. All right, let's start on our stuffing. Now, we're going to have three layers of stuffing. We're going to have a layer of what is like kind of like scalloped potatoes and then a layer of cheese, baby spinach, leeks and mushrooms and then another layer of what is like scalloped potatoes. What it is, is thinly sliced potatoes that have been partially cooked on the stove top in butter and cream. And it's not just potatoes, it's uh, um, an onion too. So you're gonna need an onion. Now we want to 
slice our onion. The onion doesn't have to be as prettily sliced as the potato, and if you're anything like me, you hate slicing onions because you'll cry a river. So what I do is I cut them in half like that so they lay flat and I can cut them up in nice little half slices. There we go. Okay, I'll rinse this off and I'll meet you guys at the stove. Okay, here we go. Now this is really simple, folks. All we're going to do is we're going to take about two tablespoons of butter and we're going to melt it in a medium pan. And of course, we're going to add some pepper. And as that melts, we want to coat the bottom. And we're going to add, oh, I don't know, almost a cup of heavy cream. You can use half and half. You can even use whole milk. I just happen to have the whipping cream. And all we're going to do is we're just going to put our onions and our potatoes in this pan with the cream. And we're going to put a lid on them. And we're just going to let those poach in the cream. A little bit more pepper. And we're going to go back to making the rest of our filling. Alrighty. Here we have our wilted cabbage leaves. And we are going to let these cool a little bit before we use them. And we're going to work on the rest of our stuffing. Okay, I'm probably not going to use all these mushrooms because we do have quite a bit of potatoes to go. I'm going to plant that. So we'll put that in there with some soil and see how that works. But for now, we want these all cut up and in here. Let's put some of our baby spinach in here. I, I saw this recipe on some cooking show that was on after my mother-in-law's Young and the Restless. But I, I didn't see the whole show, but I got the idea. So I, I, I think I can manage it. So we're just going to... Take this leek here and chop that up. And in with the spinach and the mushrooms, that goes. So it's kind of like going to be like scalloped potatoes au gratin and um, in, a, in a cabbage shell, pretty much. And that is plenty. Okay, now here is our pan, our cake pan with the removable bottom. And what we're going to do is we're going to take these cabbage leaves and we're just going to, let's put them the hard side down. We're just going to set them in the pan so that they line it. This is why I needed more because my leaves should have been bigger. And we want them kind of overhanging the pan because we are going to be folding them in. Now if I didn't have to cut these leaves, they would have been the perfect size. But I did, so we'll make do. If you remember my bacon, potato, cheese, pie, that I made that uh, a variation of Chef Michael Smith's recipe. I didn't have perfectly shaped bacon that time either. So here we go. And you're going to want to save a couple of leaves for the very top. Now we want the bottom covered and then we want to work our way out. And we're going to save a couple of leaves just for the very top. Okay, this looks like a lot of cabbage. And if you notice, my pan is on a um, cookie sheet with two pieces of tin foil. Okay, so here is the base and we have a couple of leaves left over for the top. Now let's get our potatoes, which have been poaching. They're not cooked. We just kind of lightly poached them in the heavy cream. And we're going to start putting a layer of 
potatoes and onions in the bottom here just as if you were laying out a scallop potato dish now if you don't if you notice I'm using a slotted spoon or an egg lifter because we, we're going to pour the cream sauce in afterwards now we're going to take oh our oven is preheating at 375 degrees now we're going to take some of our homemade potato starch about a teaspoon and we're just going to sprinkle that on top of the first layer. This will help the cream to thicken naturally in potato starch. Okay, now we're going to take our center layer of baby spinach and leeks and mushrooms. Isn't that lovely? Now you can put meat in here if you want. If you want to make this a whole meal dish, you could add some diced chicken, some diced ham, maybe even some bacon that has been um, diced and fried. And we're just gonna push that down in there, nice and firm, because this is really going to be a solid meal. This is one of the reasons you want a springform pan, and let's hope that this will do the job, because folks, I don't have a springform pan, so this may not come out all in one piece like it's supposed to. There, we push that layer nice down. We're gonna add some grated marble cheese. Why marble cheese? Because that's what I've got in the fridge. You can add any fancy cheese you want. You can do Swiss, mozzarella, parmigiano, whatever you like. All right, now we're going to finish with a layer of potatoes on top of that cheese. Doesn't that look lovely? Okay, now. Still got a bit of onion in there, but that's okay. And we're gonna give this another sprinkle of home made or home harvested potato starch, but another teaspoon, teaspoon and a half maybe, maybe even a tablespoon. The important thing is, is that this is potato starch, not corn starch. Now we're gonna take the rest of our heavy cream and butter and the bits of onion that are in the pan. And we're just gonna pour this all over top, just like that. Now, that isn't a whole lot of liquid, but remember folks, the potatoes are only partially cooked. The mushrooms, the spinach, the leeks, they are not cooked. So as they cook, they are going to give off liquid, hence the potato starch. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take one leaf of cabbage and put it over the top like that and we're going to fold all these little guys in and we're just going to take our last two leaves of cabbage and Bob's your uncle. This is ready for the oven. Isn't that going to be beautiful? Now this is going... Well, let's fold this in a little bit, our parchment paper. Now, ideally, <laughs> this tin foil is supposed to come completely over the top, which it's not, so I'm probably going to have to put another piece on. So let's just go ahead and do that. And by the way, if you want to wow your camping friends, do this in it. Put this in, make a smaller one, put it inside a Dutch oven on a wire rack and bury it in the coals of the fire and let it bake. And you will be able to dish up something gourmet beautiful right from the campfire. Anyway, we have this on a cookie sheet and it's going to go into a 375 degree oven for one hour and 40 minutes to bake. Now here's the other part of our dinner, folks, is uh, some ribs. And I've just rubbed them with some garlic, some paprika, some salt, some pepper, and uh, some onion powder. And we're just going to let these, we're going to put these in the oven in about a half an hour. And when they're just about ready to come out, I'm going to put some Mrs. Wolfie's Bold and Sassy barbecue sauce on there. And because uh, that's all I love on my ribs. We'll give them a coat. Let them bake a bit, flip them over, coat them again, and that's what we're going to have with our stuffed cabbage. Okay, folks, our stuffed baked cabbage. Now, we're going to leave this 
in the pan for 15 minutes to set up. And I just want to give you a sneak peek of the ribs. Mm. We will see you guys at the dinner table. Alrighty now. Let us unveil our stuffed cabbage. Keep your fingers crossed, folks, that it comes out because I don't have a spring form pan. And I only have this pan that has the has the bottom that pushes up. I really, really oh I know what I'll do. Howie, grab me another plate. Oh my goodness. Would you look at that? I don't know if I can get this up off the... Well, let's do this. One. And Bob's your uncle. Oh my goodness. Would you look at that? baked cabbage. All right, we'll be back when I have the ribs on the table and everyone's here. Okay, you can start cutting up those ribs. I'm going to find something to dish up. Uh -huh. Pass me your plate. Dear. Oh my, I've got to take a picture of that. I've never made this before. It probably needs some salt. I didn't want to over salt it. It's hot. Okay, ribs. Wonderful, as usual. Well, there you go. This is the Miss Avogli from our Half Acre Homestead saying, you know, spring has sprung and I've gotten a second wind. Bob's your uncle. What a dinner.